I'm joined here with Angela Brooks Trotsuk, the CEO of the Lloyd Minster Interval Home Society. Now, obviously, this year has been different than years past, but what has been some highlights for the Interval Home Society this year? Wow, some highlights. Um, certainly, 2020 has been an interesting year for the Interval Home Society um, well, and the rest of the world. Um, the highlights really have been, I mean, we've had really a positive um, highlight to talk about, which would be the expansion of our emergency shelter. We were able to complete that renovation um, this summer. So that was certainly good news for us. We expanded from 21 beds to 33 beds um, by renovating um, the old administration offices, which are now located in our admin building, which is attached to LCYC. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to open those beds to 100% capacity because of COVID. And I mean, that has been our whole year, unfortunately, dealing with the realities of COVID-19 and how that has impacted everything that we do um, at the society. What has been some changes that the Interval Home Society has had to make throughout the pandemic? Oh my goodness. <laughs> we've changed there hasn't been an area of the society that hasn't been changed um, certainly our shelter our residential programming so our emergency shelter and our transitional housing has remained open so that hasn't changed but how we operate has changed in that our already very stringent and um, strict sanitary and, and occupational health and safety requirements have um, increased greatly um, to make sure that we're keeping our staff and our clients safe. I mean, that that's the utmost importance. So we've really had to change how we do what we do in our residential programs. But thankfully, uh, we're an essential service. So we're, we're thankful that we're able to remain open for people who need us, but do that in a safe and um, efficient manner still. So hasn't been without its challenges, of course, but we've been able to um, stay the course and remain open in those two programs. The youth center we had to close, um, it, kind of in the immediate um, aftermath of COVID, but we were able to open back up when the schools um, opened up again. Um, we've had to adapt that programming as well as our community programming to, to be able to go online. So we had a fairly quick turnaround time of taking all of our programming that we do in group or one-on-one -on -one in a face-to-face -face format and roll it into online. So our staff have, have been amazing at being able to take that. Um, and, and with very little technical knowledge, so to speak, I mean, we know how to run email and Teams and, you know, those basic tools, but really to efficiently and, and meaningfully load and adapt our programming to, to online format has, has been a learning experience. Um, back to the youth center, I mean, we did remain open, or we opened up again, um, but we did have to cut our capacity, which um, left some challenges for, for youth. We saw a lot more... Um, closed doors or what we call, we, we have to kind of close the doors to any more youth coming in for the evening. So we've had to do a lot more of that. Um, I, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but um, one of the cool things that we did at LCYC, which you may or may not have heard me talk about before, but I'm sure um, some of the community members have heard about dinner time, which we're looking at rolling out again here, which was kind of the curbside meal delivery service that we provided to to folks, um, some of our youth and their families. So that was that was pretty neat. Yeah. And how has the support been from the community this year? Yeah, it's it's been wonderful. I mean, support has transitioned, I would say, of course. Um, we have our, our biggest fundraiser, which is for the interval store. So one of the challenges we had there was we had to close. Um, but I have to say, you know, when we were able to open back up, um, our, our customers came back and our, our community came back full throttle and, and um, so much so that we were able to open Thriftmas on 50th, which is the Christmas store downtown, which, um, you know, resulted really from an issue that we were seeing in that, you know, our donations come in from community. Um, our community supports us greatly with 
um, the donations of clothing, textiles, you know, um, household goods, pretty much anything that you could think of, we've had donated. Um, but because of the quarantine and the, the lack of um, us to engage a full volunteer staff because of social distancing requirements, it meant a backup of um, donations and, and lack of space. So, you know, it was a challenge, but we saw it as a challenge that we could find a unique solution to. And, and there came Christmas on, or Thriftmas on 50th, um, where we unpacked, I don't know how many years of Christmas <laughs> donations and put them into a totally different store and it's been received so well from the community um, you know people maybe aren't able to donate monetarily like they were previously but people are are still coming to us and asking how they can help and um, you know that's the thing that when we take the time to really slow down and, and focus on the positives um, that that's what we we notice is that yeah, times are tough right now and, and it is challenging for folks. I don't know one person that I've talked to in the last, I don't know, few weeks that hasn't told me how, you know, stressed or challenged they are and how tired they are. Um, but, you know, the community is still strong and, and there's, they still have full hearts and, and they're still willing to help. So we're certainly thankful for that. And this year, the Interval Home celebrated 40 years in the community. Yeah. And this year, you know, it has been tougher, like we've mentioned. So being able to offer help for, for this many years in this area, and this again this year, is something that the Interval Home must be proud that they can be a shoulder to lean on for the community members. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. It, it feels like that kind of got lost you know, that 40 year celebration. I mean, we had an actual party kind of event planned. Um, we were, you know, planning last year at this time and, and um, unfortunately things didn't happen. So yeah, it's, it's kind of got lost, like I said, in all of the rigmarole with dealing with COVID. So thanks again for bringing that up. It is quite a, an accomplishment, 40 years um, in a community uh, dealing with the community's most vulnerable population. Um, we, of course, wish that we didn't have to exist. We would love to work ourselves out of a job, and, and that's ultimately our our ultimate dream goal is to not to eradicate family violence and, and violence in general um, in interpersonal relationships and and to work ourselves out of a job. But we're here in the meantime to celebrate that 40 years has gone by, that we've been able to maintain our services um, to the community and that we remain part of, a, part of the vital fabric of the community. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Angela. You're welcome, thank you.